Hello and welcome to another great tutorial for Band in a Box. Today we're looking at using VST3 plugins in Band in a Box. This is a new feature for 2025 and we're excited to show you how it works. To start, we want to open the mixer in Band in a Box. There are a few ways to do this. If you're using the default modern view in Band in a Box, the easiest way to open the mixer is to click on the Mixer tab in the upper right toolbar. If you're using the older classic view, you can click on the Mixer window button in the Transport toolbar here. And in both cases, you can open the mixer from the window menu by clicking Mixer window or by pressing Control shift m Once you're in the mixer, you'll want to go to the Plugins tab here. From here, you'll notice that there are four different slots on each track, each of which will usually say None by default. These are the available plugin slots for each track. You might also notice on some tracks that the first plugin slot says Default Synth. This indicates that this track is a MIDI track and will require a MIDI instrument to be able to play. This first plugin slot is always reserved for instrument plugins on these tracks. Either way, choose a track, then click on the plugin slot of your choice. This will bring up a menu allowing you to choose either VST3 or VST2 slash DXI plugins, and of course in this case we want to choose VST3. When you first open this window, the plugin list will be empty, so it will ask you to scan for VST3 plugins. Click Yes to do that. This may take a few minutes to scan your plugins, depending on how many you have. And now that the scan is complete, we have our list of plugins to choose from. But before we do that, I'll quickly show you how to navigate to this window. At the top, you have various columns. Clicking on each one will allow you to sort by name, format, category, manufacturer, or version number. There's a scroll bar on the right if you have too many plugins to fit on one page. Down in the lower left, there's an options button. Clicking on this allows you to add or remove plugins from the list. You can set different folder locations to scan, in case you have any VST3 plugins that are not installed in the default program files slash common files slash VST3 folder. But unless you purposefully installed plugins elsewhere, this should not be necessary. If you accidentally add an incorrect folder, then clicking Reset to Defaults will remove any custom folders. Below that, you can scan for VST3 in a specific directory. This is handy if you have a folder of VST plugins that you want to add to Band in a Box once, but you do not want to have them scanned every time. And just below that, you can add a specific VST3 file without having to add an entire folder. If you're having trouble with a plugin, the next two options can come in handy. The first one, Show Folder Containing Selected VST3 Plugins, will locate the VST3 file for the selected plugins. And the second one, Show VST3 Plugins That Failed to Scan, will show a list of any plugins that failed the scanning process. At the bottom of this menu, you can remove any selected plugins from the list, remove any where the VST3 file no longer exists, or remove all plugins from the list. On the right side of the window, there is a convenient rescan button, which should be used anytime you have new or updated plugins, and a choose button, which will apply and launch the selected plugin. Now, I've chosen the first plugin slot on the drums track, so I think I'll add a dynamics plugin. The easiest way to do this would be to sort by category, then scroll down to the dynamics section. I'll start by double-clicking on this KHS compressor to launch it. Now, as you can see, this plugin is showing in the first plugin slot of the drums track. I want to compress these drums a bit more, so I'm going to solo the track, then tweak the plugin a bit. All right, I'm fairly happy with that, so we can close the plugin. If at any point you want to reopen a plugin window, simply click on that plugin slot to reopen it. Also, if you've changed your mind on which plugin to use, or you accidentally double-clicked on the wrong plugin, 
Simply right click on the plugin slot, then choose VST3 plugin again. Now, in addition to choosing effect plugins, like the Dynamics plugin I was just using, we can also use MIDI instrument plugins. As I mentioned earlier, any plugin slot that starts with default synth is going to be a MIDI track. You can also identify track type by the text color. MIDI tracks are either yellow or light blue, depending on whether they're a regular MIDI track or a MIDI super track. Now, as before, simply click on that plugin slot, then choose a VST3 plugin. Unlike before though, you may notice that this time it's not prompting me to scan for VST3 plugins. This is because the scanning process automatically scans for both instrument and effect plugins, and since we already did the scan earlier in the video, it doesn't need to be done again. As before, I'm simply going to choose a plugin from the list, in this case, Contact 8. Contact has a fairly large interface, so I'm going to make this window a bit bigger by clicking and dragging the bottom right corner. Keep in mind though, not all plugins can do this. Anyway, I think I want an electric piano, so I'm going to choose one from the list. Now let's play the song and see how that sounds. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something here today. However, if you've got any questions or run into any trouble, feel free to contact our customer service team. We're available by phone, email, and online chat, and we're always happy to help. Either way, keep on rocking, and as always, have fun!